For the moment, the pandemonium surrounding 5G seems to have settled down a little bit. But not entirely. We regularly see Mark Steele on MC Toon's channel, who is a man who thinks 5G is some sort of bioweapon. And recently I stumbled across something too on YouTube when I saw a man try to tell us the truth about 5G. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tinfall Tuesday with me, Simon and Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick word from me about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable, encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your device, and ensuring your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. Now, on top of that, they block ads, trackers, malwares, and phishing attempts, and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you want simultaneously. It's 2024. We spend so much time on the internet, up to six to eight hours per day. That means the internet knows a hell of a lot about us. And that's why we should care about our online data. Now you can use Surfshark to encrypt your personal information and send it via a secure VPN tunnel, so no one can see it without your permission, which is great for protecting things like your ID. ID theft is an increasingly common and scary crime. You can use Surfshark and its HackLock system to get alerts anytime your email address or password is compromised. HackLock scans various databases of leaked information and then it notifies its users if their data is found so that they can take action. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. Enter the coupon code SIMANDAN for an extra three months free at surfshark.deal slash SIMANDAN or hit that link in the description. Right, on with today's video, which comes from a YouTube channel called Fair Play Now. He was interviewing a man called Ian Jarvis, who wants to tell us the real truth about 5G. We join our interviewer as he starts to ask his guest Ian about new frequencies being introduced throughout history. It's obvious, well, you know, it seems to me, at least, that every time a new frequency is brought in, it, uh, it takes maybe a certain amount of time for the human body to respond to that. That's an interesting point. You know, if, if we allow that uh, humans and, to some extent, animals as well can adapt, and we are very adaptable, you know, it's true. Um, I mean, think, think about what we've had... Um, go, even just going back to before 2010, you know, when there's very little of this higher frequencies, you know, four, well, even up to 2.4 gigahertz. That's what um, our routers are mostly using at the moment. 2.4 gigahertz? 2.4 gigahertz? Yeah, that's a really high frequency. Perhaps you should take care when walking into any room bathed in light or anywhere outside during the day. That 500 terahertz is positively frightening, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> and that, as, as some of you, uh, some of the people watching this, and you will probably also, Tim, know, is the, the frequency used in a microwave oven. Yes, but a microwave oven pumps microwaves into a tiny little metal box at a power of a thousand watts. A 5G mast uses power in the range of 20 watts and out into the open air as well. There is a vast difference and this is an awful comparison. Yeah. So, and, and you know, people like myself and other friends of mine that, that, that I know of who are working in this area uh, make the point, you know, that, that that's basically where we're living. It's like living in a microwave oven. Scaremongering of the highest order. It's nonsensical to even suggest it, and there's no grounding in science whatsoever. 2.4 gigahertz around there is the frequency that affects water molecules. So, to put it technically, I always say it jiggles the water molecules about. And, uh, but, uh, and, um, and, and you ask, I often ask the question of, um, of audiences, I say, well, if it was perfectly safe, would the uh, microwave oven manufacturers actually put a nice solid steel frame around it with a uh, specially designed glass door um, that will not let the radiation out? Yes, they would, because at that power it isn't safe, is it? And also, it wouldn't cook your food if it didn't do that. 
if, yeah. if it was perfectly safe, they wouldn't need to do that, would they? And I'm sure it'd be an yeah. awful lot cheaper to put a plastic case around it and not worry about you know all that. Thing. So they're trying to stop the radiation out. And it's often one of the things that I think manufacturers put, I don't have one, so, um, uh, so I, I can't say what the manufacturers say at the moment. Uh, but um, yeah, it, yeah I've, I've seen them saying, you know, make sure that the, thing, the, the door is closed, don't put your cat in it. I mean, who would actually put their cat in it? It is fairly dangerous at this power level. That is not in dispute, but not dangerous in the manner that you think. Microwaves are non-ionizing radiation. So any danger at microwave exposure at that power would most likely result in skin burns. There was, there was a story, you, you may be old yes. enough to remember it, about somebody trying to dry out of either a little cat or a little dog in a microwave oven yeah. <laughs> with obvious disastrous consequences. Um, so, you know, you know, yes, we're not gonna to want to put even our hand in one, let alone that. It tells its own story, doesn't it? That's what a modern router is beaming at us two frequencies um, that are um, common in our modern routers, 2.4 and 5. Now that's 5 gigahertz, which is a frequency, not 5 as in fifth generation, 5G. You know, it's a little bit of a confusing uh, yeah, terminology, yeah, but it, yeah. you, the people need to understand that that is a very different thing. And the average router transfers Wi-Fi an average power of around 100 milliwatts. So nothing in the range of a microwave oven then. And to further confirm my point, five gigahertz is a frequency. Frequency is the amount of times a wave passes a certain point every single second. The light in this room has a frequency of five terahertz. The infrared remote control in your house, 300 gigahertz. Your point is totally irrelevant. Um, I was talking to a chap this morning who said, it shows 5G on my phone, but it's utter rubbish. He says, I don't get anything, it's not even as good as 4G. So he, he says, I've actually switched off 5G on my phone. Right. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and that was before he even knew me. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so, so that's an interesting thing that, that he is just a normal person. Is that, yeah. <laughs> am I allowed that yeah. word? The reliability of the 4G network versus the 5G network in this conversation is also totally irrelevant. Yeah, very, uh, <laughs> well, uh, an anecdotal uh, yeah. observation there. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I was talking to another guy who's uh, you know, been looking into this kind of thing and he said, well, I actually sort of called the title of the video, uh, uh, we're being cooked in our homes. Mm. That's how he put it. Uh, so if it's sort of on the same frequency as microwaves, radiation, uh, that would be a fair assessment, don't you think? I think it is a fair assistant, uh, assessment, yeah. I've got friends around, around the country who think the same, yeah, absolutely. Total nonsense again. Yeah, yeah, definite total nonsense. And um, of course, if you go up to higher frequencies, 60, um, gigahertz. This this was um, spoken about in again when when the COVID thing kept, first came out to the news uh, a few years ago. Now, um, sixty gigahertz um, compromises oxygen molecules. More bad science, probably absorbed by some ridiculous video on Facebook or YouTube again. If that really was the case, and the 60 gigahertz frequency really compromised our ability to breathe oxygen, then why would most wireless security camera systems use the 60 gigahertz frequency? And uh, in the, uh, again, in the early days, Northern Italy was hit badly. Um, and I can remember reading uh, articles by Italian doctors who live in that area, just south of the Alps saying it's the symptoms are more like altitude sickness. Interesting. So that 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 uh, you know stuck in my in my mind at that time you know yes and uh, you know we were we were looking around for a cause and a, a reason and ultimately a solution. So hang on what's your point here that Covid is nothing but altitude sickness? Well that's ridiculous. Altitude sickness does not start till around 2,000 metres in elevation. How much of the world is above 2,000 metres in elevation? Not much. At uh, that time. And um, yeah, they, they, they came out quite early on saying it looks like altitude sickness. So was that frequency being 
brought out? I've no idea, Tim. Absolutely no idea. Yeah, that seems like a common theme in this video. Now they rattle on a bit more, the two of them, and then the interviewer asks quite an interesting question. Uh, let's say you've got someone who comes up to you and says, look, I've, I've never experienced any of these ill effects. Uh, <coughs> I think it's just a load of nonsense, conspiracy theories. Uh, there's nothing wrong with 5G or wireless. Uh, what would you say to a person like that? I would say, well, what research have you done? Yeah. Have you looked into it? Yes, I have. Have you just listened to the government um, or just read pamphlets from the industry? I understand the science of the electromagnetic spectrum and physics as a whole. That is enough, my friend. Um, and, uh, and that... And if they say, yes, I've read lots of them, and I just think the science isn't good enough, I say, well, fine, that's okay, we can disagree. We disagree then, and you are wrong. Thanks. Um, I'm, I'm not going to waste my time arguing with somebody who is never going to change their mind, um, whatever. I might suggest a book, like Martin Blanks, for example, for them to read, uh, which wouldn't take them too much time. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, I, it, it is a matter of, well, what research have you done? Yeah, um, well, we've seen that in other areas, haven't we? Haven't we uh, just? Uh, people yeah. who have sort of done many hours, or mm. hundreds or thousands of yeah. hours of research, and then other, other people who uh, just watch TV and, mm. and call you crazy. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what, you mean how flat earthers have done hundreds of thousands of hours of research and are still epically wrong? Well, there we go, everyone. We'll leave our good friend Ian there for today. What do we all think of his interview? For me, he is saying a lot of things that I've heard people say before, all of which has been long debunked. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, as I said, we're all done debunked for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. It is appreciated. Please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that thumbs up button too. Just enough time for another word from me about today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Remember, uh, go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use the code simandan to get that three months extra free or just click the link in the description. I've been Simon and Dan. Have yourselves a cracking week and I'll see you on Friday for the return of Peter and Pete. See you then.